Okay, so now we're going to learn how to solve a quadratic inequality. And a quadratic inequality is something where I have ax squared plus bx plus c is greater than or less than or something right here that's not an equal sign and then zero. So I want to solve for x. Now, your solutions here aren't going to be x equals something, okay, because it's not an equation. Instead, instead it'll be x is less than something or x is greater than something, or maybe x is less than or equal to some number. Okay, so you're going to have inequalities in your answer, not an equal sign. Or you might not have any solution at all, but I don't think we'll see that at all today. Um, so the steps for doing this is first you want to get everything on the left-hand side. So you want it to look like this right here. Okay, then you want to find your direction. Remember, to find the direction of a graph, we use A. So you'll look at A for the direction, and it, generally I like to write, you know, write the direction. So remember it's smiley face or up if A is positive, or down if A is negative, down like a frown. Um, then we want to solve for zero. So basically what you want to do in that is you want to change the sign, one of these, either the greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, you want to change that to an equal sign just for the sake of solving this problem. Okay, and then you want to find the zeros of the function. So you can do that by factoring using the quadratic formula or taking the square roots. Once you've found the zeros, we're going to make a nice little number line and find our solution set. So we make a number line and hopefully we'll line straighter than mine. There we go. Okay, so you make a number line, plot your zeros on that number line, and then you're going to graph your graph now, if it's ne if it's negative, if you go down like a frown, then you're going to draw that down like a frown. If your graph goes up like a cup, then you're going to draw it like this, up like a cup. Okay, right through those zeros right there. And then that'll help us find our solutions. And your solutions, remember, are going to have the inequality signs. Like this. So let's first start by solving for x in this inequality, x squared minus 2x is greater than or equal to, or excuse me, just greater than 15. So we want to get everything to this left side. So to do that, we're going to subtract 15, and we get x squared minus 2x minus 15 is greater than 0. Okay, so we want to determine our direction. Remember a here is 1, so our direction is going to be up. Now that we've found our, we've got everything to one side, we've found our direction, we're going to solve for our zeros. So we take x squared minus 2x minus 15, and that equals 0. So now we will solve for x. Um, let's see, can we find then, you could use the quadratic formula, I'm thinking here. We could, um, we can't solve by taking the square root. We could complete the square. Um, I think it might be easiest, however, in this case, to solve by factoring. So we want to find factors of negative 15 that add up to negative 2. Well, right away I'm thinking of negative 5 and 3, okay, because those add multiply together to get negative 15, and negative 5 plus 3 gives us negative 2. So those are going to be my factors, so then I would have x minus 5 times x plus 3 equals 0. So my zeros then will be x equals 5, and when x is negative 3. Okay, those are my two zeros. Now that I've found the zeros, I am going to plot them on a number line along with a direction. Okay. Thanks for coloring my not so straight lines here. Okay, so we have negative 3 and 5, and remember our direction was up. So I'm going to go up like this through here, curve back around. Okay, now let's look at what our question is asking. Our inequality says when is x squared minus 2x minus 15 
greater than zero. Okay, remember, greater than zero means positive. Less than zero means negative. Okay, and then if we include zero, like greater than or equal to zero, that's positive or zero. If it's less than or equal to zero, well, that means it's negative or zero. That's important stuff to remember. So if you need to write that down, go ahead. You can pause this video if you need to. Okay, so we want our um, equation to be greater than zero, so we want to know where is it positive. Well, if we look at this is our graph, right? This is the x-axis, so our function is positive here and here because it's above this line, above the x-axis in both of these spots. Okay, here it's negative. So we want then the values of x that are positive. So we want to include all of these. Okay, so our solution then is going to be x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 5. Now see how normally if this were an equation it would the solutions would be x is 5 or x is negative 3. Well now since this is an inequality these are our solutions. Okay? Let's try another inequality. This time we have negative 4x squared minus x plus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So we don't need to solve for everything on this side. We've got everything on the left side, so we're fine. We don't need to do anything there. What we do need to do is find our direction next. So since a is negative 4, our direction then is going to be down. So in this case, we've got a graph that faces down like a throne. Okay, so that's the direction part. Now we need to find our zeros. Because remember, step two, find the zeros. To do that, we'll set it equal to zero. So negative 4x squared minus x plus 3 equals zero. So where is that true? Okay, to do this now, we need to factor most likely. You can use the quadratic formula. In this case, I think factoring is going to work out for us. It's just a hunch, but let's... Okay, so but the first thing we want to do probably is factor out a negative one since this is a negative number in the front. So we can either factor out that negative one, or since we have an equation, we can actually divide both sides of our equation by negative one. So what that'll do is it'll just change all the signs here. So this will be positive four of positive x, and then this becomes a negative three equals zero. So really we have four x squared plus x minus three equals zero. So we want to factor this. Um, four times negative three gives us negative 12. So we're looking for factors of negative 12 that add up to 1, because this is a coefficient of 1 right here. Um, so 1 and 12, probably not going to work. Those are too far apart. Um, 2 and 6, again, probably too far apart. 3 and 4, if we have a negative 3 and a positive 4, those would be 1. But if we had negative 4 and a positive 3, that would be negative 1. So we really want negative 3 and 4. So we rewrite with the middle terms as 4x squared minus 3x plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, and then we can, we want to factor again. So 4x squared and negative 3x both have a factor of x, so that becomes 4x minus 3. And then 4x and negative 3 have no factors, so we pull out a 1, and that becomes 4x minus 3. And then those are both the same, so we know that we factored correctly. So we have x plus 1 times 4x minus 3 equals 0. So again, um, we want to find our zeros. So we set x, e x plus 1 equals 0, or 4x minus 3 equals 0. So either x is negative 1, or x is 3 fourths. Excuse me, that's a bad 3. Here, I'll rewrite it. Those are our two zeros. Okay, so we want to put those on the number line. I'm going to draw my number line up here. 
So here's negative 1. And 3 fourths is going to be right here. Now my graph is going to be down like a frown, just like that. Okay, and then I want to know where is it less than zero? Well, my graph is above the line here, so it's positive. It's below the line here, so it's negative here. And it's below the line here. Okay, so again, this is what we're looking at. If it's less than or equal to zero, where is my graph going to be negative? Well, it's negative in this region right here and this region right here. So I say where x is less than or equal to negative 1, and I include the equal to because my original inequality had an equal to. Or x is greater than or equal to 3 fourths. And that's my solution. Okay, we got one more example. So pretend we're solving for x um, in this inequality, 4x squared is less than 25. So first thing we want to do is we want to get everything on the left side of the equation here. So we want to subtract our 25. So you have 4x squared minus 25 is less than 0. So we're looking for where is our equation less than 0. Now remember, our a value is 4. Positive means that it goes up like a cup like a smiley face. So now we want to find our zeros. Well, we have 4x squared. And for this, you can use your original inequality and change it to an equal sign. So we can just say 4x squared equals 25. You'll see why we're doing that in a second. OK, so we want to solve for x. It's easiest in this case if we solve for x by using the square root method. So we can divide by 4 and get x squared equals 25 fourths. Then if we take the plus or minus square root of both sides, we get x equals the plus or minus square root of 25 over 4. And that simplifies to plus or minus 5 halves, which is about 1 and a half. So those are our zeros. We want to plot them on the number line. Here's negative 5 halves. Here's positive 5 halves. OK, and then I'm going to draw my graph shape. And let's look to where we rewrote our equation here. We want where our equation or our inequality is less than 0. So if our graph is positive here, it's negative here, and it's positive here, we're looking for the region where it's negative. Well, that's going to be right here. OK, so our solutions then, because it's not an equal sign here, is going to be x is between 5 halves and negative 5 halves. Because here, we're literally taking all the values between negative 5 halves and 5 halves. So that's going to be your solution there. So let's recap. If your function is less than 0, we want to look for all the negative values. If your quadratic function is greater than 0, we're looking for the positive values. If it's less than or equal to 0, we want negative or 0. And if it's greater than or equal to 0, we want positive or 0. So in these, we're going to include here, okay, include the values. So these get included. Always, your solution should have if your function is less than or greater than, in other words, there's no equal sign, then it, your answer will be the same. Okay? Your direction, remember, if A is positive, our function goes like this, up like a cup, and if A is negative, it goes down like a frown. Okay? And then anything above our line here will be positive. Anything below your line is negative. So if I had a graph that was going down like a frown, okay, this is positive area and this is the negative area.